Okay, it's uh, exactly 1.45, so it's exciting to see all of you here, um, and we'll get started. Um, my name is Nithya Ruff, and I work for Synopsys. Um, I'm responsible for the virtual product uh, prototyping product line, um, and I've been doing open source in Linux since 1998-99. Um, um, started at Silicon Graphics, uh, where I was responsible for the Linux support and services strategy, and then worked at Tripwire, where we did open sourcing of Tripwire, um, and then since then worked at Windriver, uh, did Windriver Linux, which is a commercial <laughs> Linux, and then now I work very closely to enable embedded software development and open source developers through organizations like this. And? and I'm Tracy Irway. I work at Intel Corporation. I work as a marketing person for Intel's contributions to the Octo Project, and I also work on the Octo Project as the advocacy team lead, which is our marketing group for the project. And uh, I guess I started off as an uh, embedded systems developer, and then my theory is that the marketing people get to wear better clothes, so I moved <laughs> over to marketing. <laughs> I didn't get any better clothes, I have to admit. But, um, and then I had the pleasure of working with uh, Nithya on the Octo Project when she worked for another company. So that's how we met. And we've been talking about doing this presentation for a long time. Hope you find it useful. Yep. So, um, Trace? Oh, yeah. So we're going we're gonna to start off and look at uh, how you know, uh, a project cycle generally starts off, why no one typically does any marketing, or at least to date, marketing isn't really thought of in the open source community uh, a whole lot, and what the objective really would be for marketing in open source. And, and really what this presentation does is call out the differences between uh, uh, marketing, if you're part of a corporation contributing to a project, versus uh, marketing for an open source project itself. So we're going to do uh, both pieces for you and call out the differences because they do have differences, and it's pretty important to uh, pick which side you're, you're marketing from and do it consistently. And we're going to use the Octo project as a case study for us and then wrap it up at the end and tell you all our pearls of wisdom when we get there. We were thinking about marketing in open source and when I know when Nithya and I first started working on the Octo project we felt really alone as marketers but also I think from a project point of view if you put something out there and you're waiting for people to get all involved in it and nothing happens, you too are very alone. So there's definitely a marriage that can take place here between the whole project and marketing uh, uh, points of view, and that's what we're presenting today. And, and typically what happens, it's, it's our observation that um, you know, open source projects typically start with a problem. So someone finds a problem that they have and they solve it by creating a solution. So in, in open source, it's common to call it an itch to scratch. And then there's a tremendous amount of enthusiasm because uh, they put it out there and they find kindred spirits. There's other people who have the same issue and same challenge. And then they group together and they start developing the solution and it keeps snowballing, growing bigger and bigger till the point where um, the gatekeeper or the, the main, uh, you know, person creating the solution realizes that he or she is bearing the burden of everything, of attracting the community, of um, marketing the product, of finding users, developing over in, in the night in his basement or wherever. And so it becomes soon the reality that the burden of the project overwhelms this person who started out with so much enthusiasm. And the project then fizzles. And then you find that uh, it dies away. And there are many, many projects that we find um, die because of the lack of uh, awareness or marketing or reaching out to others to become a part of this project. We, when we started talking about this, we thought, why isn't there more marketing with open source stuff? And we weren't even necessarily sure how to go about it. And uh, first of all, it's not code. And you don't have any respect if you don't have any code associated with you. So, um, you know, marketing has typically been not trusted because it's associated with corporations. Corporations aren't, you know, necessarily uh, having the same objectives as an open source, you know, a true open source project. It's a little bit different now because corporations are really providing the grunt of the labor in a lot of projects. But 
Um, even so, open source isn't proprietary. So, uh, you know, this whole corporate backing thing is a very difficult one to approach. Are you, are you working on this for your own reasons? Are you working on it for the altruistic, you know, open source marketing reasons or, or what? And, uh, and so you're looking for substance. I think open source is all about substance. Is it real code? Is it really working? Is it really a good solution? And that's what you are looking to market. Uh, right now, there aren't that many people who really market open source. It's, uh, you know, we'll talk about this a little further on, but there's an mm -hmm. argument that you have even in internally when you're working with corporate mar marketing groups versus groups that do marketing for the projects. Mm -hmm. Because every step of the way, the corporations are very interested in promoting themselves, and that may not be to the advantage of the project itself. So. Um, we're looking for credibility. Um, it, it, it became very clear right off the bat that no matter what you do in terms of marketing, you can't market something into acceptance. It really has to be a good project that you're supporting and, uh, and you're, you're golden if you have one of those and, can, and you have one of those to market. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Uh, that being said, you, you know, marketing it, from our perspective is really all about the same things. So you're trying to get people to contribute to the project. You're trying to attract people to help fund or promote the, the project. Uh, you're trying to get people to use it. You know, you have to have users. You can't just create a bunch of code and nobody uses it. So you've got to have users. And then you need the whole ecosystem because it all feeds itself. Developers, users, uh, all the people that are creating the bits and pieces that tie into it. So there's a lot to the marketing for open source. So uh, that brings us to the first set of constituents who market in open source, and that will be commercial companies. So this is an example of another uh, graffiti picture that we love. Um, in 2001, you know, when Linux was just beginning to take off in corporations, um, IBM was trying to get into Linux, especially uh, embrace Eclipse and, and start shipping their servers on Linux. And they wanted to break out of their blue suit, white shirt kind of a, a mentality. And so actually it was in San Francisco at Linux World. They paid a, an advertising agency to spray the sidewalks, I think in Haight-Ashbury and other areas, with these logos of uh, love, peace, Linux. Um, type of logos, and they got slapped with a huge fine of, I don't know, 2,000 bucks or something by the city. And they thought it was well worth paying that because they got a huge amount of buzz in the industry and a huge amount of uh, interest from uh, people. And they really broke out of their image of blue suits and white shirts. The point is, um, corporations absolutely market uh, their involvement in open source, and we'll talk about how they do it. Um, one of the things uh, that Tracy mentioned, which is so important, is uh, it's not about marketing the company's products and services in a commercial way. So they have to be very different in the way they market themselves. So you'll see at ELC and LinuxCon as well, you'll see Intel, you'll see Qualcomm, you'll see TI, uh, and other companies. And what they talk about when they come to open source forums is about building community. It's about sponsoring the community. It's about their contributions to open source. And it's centered around how they are moving the industry forward and partnering with open source. And they don't overtly talk about their products or commercial uh, technology. And I, I really have to commend uh, Tim and the entire ELC as well. They're very, very particular about making sure that the speakers who attend the ELC also are not peddling and pushing a commercial message, that they're actually imparting technical knowledge and uh, moving the movement forward. And the whole tone of marketing, uh, when you see the uh, OSTG from Intel or from Yocto or from any of the uh, vendors who come to the show, is all about um, you know, a very subtle um, awareness and uh, education. It's not slick, it's not commercial, it's not marketing. And you know, the, the other aspect of corporations which both of us have experienced is when we are inside the company, also we are marketing um, the open source movement inside of our companies as well. Because you do need the support of the entire corporate engine um, to support this level of messaging, this level of involvement, contribution and tone um, inside the companies as well. And then there's uh, this t-shirt, which is one of my favorites. So I was at Silicon Graphics in uh, 1999, 2000, 2001, 
we were also trying to make a name for ourselves in open source. And we thought uh, we'd break out of our you know, very corporate image by having this tie-dye t-shirt and this very provocative uh, topic um, uh, for, for the uh, session. And it, it did grab a lot of people's attention. So corporations have, have either been very subtle or they've kind of completely changed the way uh, they're imaged or they're branded uh, in the industry when they market themselves to open source. The other aspect of corporations uh, that Tracy and I were looking at was companies like Red Hat, like Wind River, um, like Monta Vista, et cetera, whose business model is based on um, building a commercial value proposition on top of open source. So they use open source as the source, but then they build uh, a product based on open source. And they also have to be very, very uh, balanced in the way they market themselves. So on the one hand, they have to say that they're leveraging open source and acknowledge where it came from. But on the other hand, they have to show where they are adding value on top of open source. So if customers have the opportunity to use open source as well, uh, why should they buy commercial open source? Uh, and where is the value add? And they also have to be very technical and based on merit and based on utility um, they need to market and not just based on religion. One of the things a CIO said to me was, he said, I am making a business decision and I know you're based on open source, which is wonderful, but I do need to know how it's going to benefit my bottom line and how it's going to uh, be, return ROI to me and what are the features and functions and why should I work with you? And at the end of the day, um, one of the messages that really resonated with CIOs and, and uh, corporate purchasers that I talked to was um, the fact that alignment with open source was an absolutely uh, excellent business decision because it uh, allowed you to leverage innovation, it allowed you to collaborate across uh, the industry, and it allowed you to reduce cost by um, pooling together uh, mainline um, changes and uh, innovations. So, and being standards based and, and not being locked into a vendor was also important to CIOs. So it's a subtle message between technical merit of the open source, but the value you add, and also how this value is important to the business um, that you're selling to. So with that, I'm gonna turn it back to Tracy to talk about the third constituents, uh, which is <coughs> projects open source projects and how they market. You can. <laughs> it's still my favorite slide, I have to admit. Um, it just, I would go ahead to the next one anyway. So this is probably, from my perspective, the most, oh, I'm sorry, Nithya, but it is the most important slide of the entire <laughs> deck is. right here. <laughs> um, and, uh, and it's one that people came up to me the first time we did this presentation and said, you know, I keep thinking about that slide. And to a lot of marketing people, this is probably not rocket science mm -hmm. right here. But to, uh, when you're looking at open source, you may not really think about what it is that you want to accomplish. And it's most important to start off with a strategic plan. And, uh, you know, we are to the part where we're starting to talk about the Yocto project as a, an example of what went on. But... Uh, we very much approach things with the focus of what's our strategy? Who do we want to attract? What do we, why do we want to attract them? Where do we find them? What channels do we have to use to reach them? And what can we say that really has value to them? And I think where we, where we most often falter, even if we come up with a strategic plan, is when we get into the tactics and say, what can we say that will really attract them? Um, so figuring out who that market is, we, you know, who are the code contributors? Where are you going to find them? Uh, and, and who are they? And who do they, you know, now you have to even think about who do they work for? You know, is that important to the project or not? Uh, who the end users are? Just like any kind of segment analysis you would do in a corporate environment, you have to do this for your project also. Where is it most appropriate to use it? Who are those people? And what are they building? Honestly, what are they building? Um, where can you find alignment with other projects and things? You know, I'll talk about this a little bit in the future. Uh, you're looking for alignment anywhere you can because uh, just like it, the code contributions in open source, the marketing really needs to be somewhat of a community effort too because you're not marketing all by yourself. You are marketing with a lot of other people and trying to get acceptance from a lot of other people. The channels are really crucial, figuring out exactly how you reach them, and, uh, and the positioning is very crucial too. 
I, I have been caught a number of times. It's, it's very interesting uh, how this has unfolded over the past couple of years. I guess it's been about two years. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm in a much different position now as a marketing person with the Octo Project than I was two years ago when I was an alien and someone to schlep around a couple of t-shirts and, you know, and, a, and a boot. And, and there's a reason for that. It's that it's really shown to have had some value for the project. But uh, the positioning was really key to that, and it was a total change in mindset from the corporate view, mm -hmm. frankly. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's not easy to build this strategic plan and be honest with yourself what you're trying to accomplish. I am part of a project that's represented by a number of different companies. It's not just Intel. It's not just you know, Wind River or TI or whomever is in the project. It's all of us. And so um, I had to learn how to represent everybody. I don't just work for one company anymore. And, and um, even a very small project that's beginning to start out and uh, starting to create a solution can benefit from this outline. Um, it's these fundamental questions that you need to know um, in order to move the project forward. Who do I work with? What's my product? And so these, these uh, things scale down to small projects as well as very, very large projects. The alliances is really key. Uh, we we uh, realized right off the bat that there was no way that the Yachta project was going to go anywhere without a lot of very important alliances. And so you look at where you can get alliances for any kind of project that you're working on. You can look at corporations and see if you have alignment with another corporation. You can look at other open source projects and all of you band together to make it a bigger project or have greater reach because each one of you attracts a different kind of developer or user or whatever to the greater whole of the project. Um, segment focused uh, alliances, if, if your project is really good for one particular industry segment, then you should be spending all your time right there just making making the most of who's in that segment and who might really want to align with you and, and do something special with you because they like the project that you're working with. And then the industry as a whole, you know, are you, are you in communications? Are you in, I mean, or, you know, is it just embedded? Are there other places that you can be? Those are the different areas that you can form alliances. And then once you do, you're trying to create momentum. You're trying to get, you know, strategically get aligned. You're trying to join together, maybe do something jointly. Um, have sponsorship from someone. There's a whole, whole lot of different ways that you can show an alignment and get results from an alignment. And, uh, and so that's what you're trying to create to actually develop some momentum at the end. This is a, a good one. And uh, <laughs> I think uh, I'll ask this question, and many of you may know this. So how do you tell a Linux developer really likes you? Uh, they look at your Yes, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so, um, hint, that's, that's not really your spokesperson. Um, and we'll talk a lot about the spokesperson because a spokesperson is such an important aspect of, uh, yeah. of a project success. Um, a spokesperson is really the representative <coughs> for the, the project. And their job is like how you know how you go about finding a job um, where you have to schmooze and uh, do a lot of uh, promotion of yourself. It's, it's a bit like that, except that there are a lot of uh, very interesting opportunities to do it. In real estate, they say it's all about location, location, location. And in, um, in schmoozing and in, in promoting a project and moving it forward, it's really about networking, networking, networking. And uh, the Linux community and the open source community provides a lot of very, very good venues to connect with other uh, like-minded people, you know, from an alliance perspective, as Tracy was indicated. You have dinner events, and I, what I love about some of the embedded Linux conference events, as well as LinuxCon, is there's a lot of social element uh, built into the conference agenda. Um, there are evening events, and then there are lunch, and so on and so forth. Always try to find someone you can uh, go to dinner with, or sit with, or talk to. Um, and find local lugs where you can go uh, talk to people and promote um, the project. And, and at the end of the day, uh, you need to give to get. So it's share. Share what you're doing, uh, why you're passionate about it, what problem you're trying to solve, 
and ask for help. Um, one of the things a lot of us uh, tend not to do, we, we are taught to be very self-sufficient, but uh, it's amazing when you open and ask for help, people are more than happy to give you an opinion or a suggestion or an introduction to somebody. And, and that's where you can also say, I, I really admire what you're doing. I'd like you to get involved in this project. And, and people do. Uh, one of the things we also felt that worked very well was um, because you are the one who's caring about the future of that project, you really need to be persistent and you need to follow up. Um, you care about it more than the person that you're trying to get to be involved in the project. You need to convince them uh, to be involved. But there is no need to be annoying, but persistence is, is, as you can see, a common thread throughout this. And it's all about relationships in this business. Um, it's, it's about knowing people, it's uh, liking people, it's, it's creating a common vision um, that they can buy into. And, and the, the point in asking also about um, the developer who likes you and doesn't like you is if, if it's not you, you've got to find someone on your team who likes doing this and who likes going out and, and evangelizing the solution and, and finding like-minded people who can join the project in a user capacity or an alliance capacity or a developer capacity. And the other thing we found was um, you'll find in this event and in other Linux events also, the people who are really memorable, the people who have a point of view, they're either blogging about it, they're tweeting about it, they have a website, they write articles because they really believe in it and they are passionate about it. And we're also very colorful people in the community, so we love goofy handouts, we love uh, t-shirts and stickers and things that are memorable. And then volunteer to be a speaker at a show or um, to be a volunteer at these events and in whatever capacity. All of those allow you to get the word out, get uh, connections and community. I think we have one of the biggest schmoozers in the audience, which is Tim Bird, who schmoozed this into existence, right? I mean, honestly. Exactly, it was, exactly. You know, a, a big marketing effort on your part to build it from nothing into something. And that's, that's pretty much exactly the kind of person you would want to have that people respect as well as uh, who has interesting things to say. Oh, maybe I stretched it too far for you. Yeah. OK. OK, I didn't really mean that. But maybe you're not such a great example. But seriously, I mean, look at it now. It's huge. And what happened? You ended up with a big alliance with the Linux Foundation, and it grew even bigger, right? So now it keeps going and going. Um, anyway, now you end up with a team. And so uh, I don't know how you look at this little thing, and then you talk. I can't do that. I have to look at the big thing. Um, uh, I, I don't know about all projects, because I'm not the goddess of everything open source. Bless you. Bless you. And, and I've certainly only worked with a few different open source projects with my particular company and now you know, with some other companies on the Octo project. But um, the governance model to me is really important. And if, if you don't have a governance model that can support marketing, for instance, you don't get any. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so. Um, <laughs> You know, from a Yocto project point of view, we actually have a governance model where people contribute money and they allocate a budget to marketing, believe it or not, just like a company would or a group would. And I think that's really set us apart from a lot of other projects out there. Um, uh, anyway, and it, and, it, and it gives you a, a way that um, people can really contribute to the project, whoever's involved in it, they're part of this governance model and it makes a big difference. Um, Creating channels for trans, you know, I think this is your slide actually, isn't it? Well, you should just go on with this slide. Okay. Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> and, and, well, both of us can speak to each other's slides. Um, and um, I think, you know, one of the things that uh, I really liked about uh, the Doctor Project and I worked on it, and, and projects in general, good projects that I've worked on, is you've got to be transparent and you've got to be honest. Um, People don't like it. it. The whole notion of open source is that you're deciding it in an open and, and honest forum for whether you're gathering requirements or making decisions on what goes into the next release. Um, and you'll find that successful projects do that. They provide forums for requirements gathering. In fact, um, a lot of these conferences are used for a birds of a feather type of discussion, for example, where um, the project lead gives an update on the project, would, would also solicit feedback on 
the list of requirements for the next project. There is no smoky room uh, behind the scenes discussions of what goes into the project, which, which I really like. I, I'm a product manager in another life, and so I really like the fact that I can honestly sit down in an open source project with users, with developers, and say, what do we do next, guys? And what's the right direction for this project? And creating a marketing plan, and I think Tracy and I experience this um, constantly, it's again not about slickness, it's not about uh, these brochures and slick value propositions and things like that. We like so we had too. to, exactly, we had to put a different hat on when we did open source marketing because at the end of the day, it has to be useful. It has to have technical merit, the white paper or um, the application note that you write or the case study has to have practical value. It has to say, how do I do it? And what does it have? And does it have the facts and figures that I need? Uh, is there sample code that I can download? Is there training? And is there a code fest? Or is there uh, a collaboration um, opportunity where I can ask others in a very op open and honest way uh, how to, for help in, in doing this? So we found that it's not the same as corporate marketing, and you just really need to understand that and, and provide the value that uh, the uh, audience is looking for. The other one we figured out is uh, how valuable a community manager is. Because we in, in the beginning, we were all kind of saying, what's each of our role? What's the marketing person's role? What's a community manager's right. role? What's the development lead's role? And so on and so forth. And the community manager is like the COO. He is the operations guy or she is the operations person who really works very hard to attract developers, create the infrastructure uh, for downloads, for chats, for IRC, for code reviews, uh, for everything. So what happens is as you get bigger as a project, um, you, know, you have the maintainer who really is the technical vision and the lead and then you have the community manager who helps get the uh, skids the greases uh, or greases the skids uh, <laughs> and and it just works well and then you have the marketing person who you know brings awareness and gets the users and uh, things like that the so other thing that community manager is really good at doing is uh, n noticing nuances and changes in users and developers and what they need and what they're looking for and what he, what he or she is hearing and so uh, like Jeffro is our community manager for the Okta project and he'll often call me up and say, you know, I've had like three people talking about this. What, what can we do to solve this problem or how can we write something up to push people in the right direction so that they, you know, get the right information or meet the right people or whatever. So we work together and uh, I think he uses me as a megaphone and, a, and, a, and, a, and almost a process to get information out. And he's collecting information and, and working with individuals and their personalities. So it's a very interesting sort of balance. So um, this is where you know, you'll actually get to see how the behind the scenes of the Octo project. And I'll hand it off to Trace and she'll walk you through you know, how the project was started and how it functions. Uh, what are the different structures of the uh, organization? Because I think when you look at a case study, you really learn in practice how <coughs> things worked and how things you know, evolved. So uh, the, the picture that was just up there, when we started mm -hmm. off the project, we didn't have any money, we didn't have anything. And you know, the first thing that, that marketing people like to do is they like to go brand stuff. Mm -hmm. We're gonna brand everything. And you know, we did just brand everything. I have to admit, if you go out to the booth and look at it, but we started off, we had a little animation that we did because it would, it would tell people what the project was. And we could point anybody we wanted to, product managers, developers, anybody, our own managers, look what we did, you know, to that animation. It told the whole story in about two minutes. And this was a character from the animation and then we thought, okay, well we, got, we have an asset. We have one artistic asset. We're gonna put it on a, you know, we started using it for just to create not really a logo, but a representation of the project. And, and we had a logo, and that's where we started. And that's all we had for the longest time. Um, you know, I talked a little bit about the advocacy team and how it came about through the governance model. We, we came up with uh, a way to actually have sub-teams. We defined that in the advisory board. And then when we collected money, they, they actually gave a budget to the marketing team and it was really pretty fabulous. Um, mind you, we argued a lot about it. 
what good is marketing, you know? It's not gonna, if you make a tchotchke, what good is that? But um, I'll tell you what, internally at Intel, there are a lot of open source projects that are being worked on in a number of ways. And I actually heard through the grapevine last week that somebody said, uh, an engineer who had pushed out an open source project of some kind, I don't even really know who it is, and, and he basically said, you know, I, I wouldn't say, I, if I'd known today, or if I'd known last year what I was going to say today, um, it's, it's that I, I wish I had had marketing to help me out with this project a year ago. Because basically it hadn't gotten where he thought it should go. And, uh, and I don't know, um, you know, I think that we feel like the Yocto project moved along a lot quicker than we thought it would because of some of the marketing efforts. Not to mention the kick-ass technology and code. I, I, um, just yeah. to add to what you said, um, an important uh, decision I think we made early on was not calling it marketing, but instead calling it yeah, advocacy. Yeah, we, we called it advocacy. Yeah. Because essentially we, we were advocating on behalf of the users and, and also on behalf of the project. Um, so we didn't want to use the word marketing. We didn't think it fit into uh, That's not project. true. We were trying to fool all the engineers who were on the advisory <laughs> board into giving us money without it seeming like it was going to marketing. So that, that's the Okay, the secret's out. Yeah. Um, we figured out really right off the bat that the most important conference we would ever go to was ELC. We, mm -hmm. we earmarked that as we thought that's where the movers and shakers in the industry we're going to be and who would use our project and this is where we're going to put all of our money and all of our time. So you will see us at ELC forever um, because it's very important to us even if, even if we're, you know, the project will always continue to grow and this, this particular conference is our conference as far as we're concerned. I mean, this is where we want to be. You people are who uh, will make or break the Yocto project. Um, we're also very unified. You know, uh, the favorite, my favorite thing about working on the advocacy team is that I don't have to talk about Intel. I don't have to talk about Intel anymore. I get to talk about the Yocto project, and I get to talk about TI, and I get to talk about um, ENEA, and I get to talk about, you know, Manor Graphics, and uh, all Amazing. the other people who are part of the advisory board. And, it, and it's a fabulous, uh, good feeling because all those people are really important to the project. And so... Uh, and, and they do the same. And it's really all about, uh, you know, we try really hard, even though it's not always possible, to have the diverse uh, members of the advisory board present at trainings or have demos in the booth or whatever. And uh, we try, you'll see that even though we make t-shirts and it may be that a company pays for t-shirts mm -hmm. or whatever, but nobody puts their logo on it. And, and we keep talking about it, you know, I'd be more willing to make some stuff for you, Trace, if I could put my company logo on it. And, and, you know, the feeling is always to resist it because once you start individually identifying the members, then the whole becomes a little bit less in my perspective. So the Octo Project is exactly that. It's the Octo Project. I'll also tell you the one thing that we did that I thought I would get fired over from the start. Um, the first thing we did was we went to ELC in Cambridge and I wanted a sponsorship. And we were late because we had just started really working on the project and figuring out how to get people involved and whatever. And so we bought a sponsorship under the name The Octo Project. And I went and begged for money for it and no one, would, no one wanted to give me money because I wouldn't put the Intel logo out there. And so I said, I'm sorry, if you don't want to give me money, fine, we'll go. You know, we didn't, we were still building the advisory board, we were still getting people on board, so it wasn't, you know, a huge mass of people yet. And so uh, we finally did it, we went out with the Yocto project, and it was, it, it set the stage for the project being a project and not a corporate project. And I can't tell you how important that is to fight those battles internally, and they're subtle. It was a very subtle thing. We could have easily put anybody's logo up there and had a little Yocto project booth there and done very well. So, um, but it, it set the stage for the whole project moving forward and how we all feel about it. Branding. Um, yeah, so now we have Yocto project branding. I don't know if we like it. We have it. Everything looks the same. It's got some yellow stripes. I, I mean, we have some very special t-shirts in here that no one else has because um, they're limited quantity and uh, I only handed them out to the Yocto Project 
soulmates, but you guys can be included in that. I brought some of those too. Okay. Some more uh, interesting elements. So messaging, you know, we do this just like a company would. We look at our key segments and we target our messages to them. So we, we have messages for developers, we have messages for users, we have messages for other marketing people. We, I mean, we have a lot of them. And the coolest thing is, this line, if we hear customers reiterate our messaging, we know we're on track, oh my gosh. We hear it from people who actually use the Octo project when they say, blah, 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 we did in two days instead of two months, and there it is on our little messaging list. So this stuff is really crucial. It's not that you say it and they believe it. It's that you say it and they actually experience it and then other people believe it. So you can never forget to do the messaging correctly, and it took us months, mm -hmm. months and months, reiteration, reiteration. And after you weren't working on the project, we were still you know, reiterating and going through all these messages. So um, launch requirements, we didn't just shove this thing out the door. We really, we, you know, we had some code, but we didn't have finished code. We had, um, we, we didn't launch until we had enough people that it really made a difference to really support the project. Um, you know, two companies wasn't enough. If you're going to have a project that supports <coughs> multiple architectures, you better have someone from all those architectures there to really say uh, that they believe in it. So, um, we, we had those kinds of requirements before we would launch. We just weren't going to go forward with it. We didn't think it would succeed. And then Nithya talked about this before. We really, we just talked about facts. You know, we're not all about aren't we great, aren't we wonderful. We really try to look at what's the value of this stuff. And that's what we market. Because nobody, nobody involved in open source really listens to bullshit, <laughs> frankly. Mm -hmm. So, uh, so we really try to concentrate on what's real, where it's going to help people, where it's going to be useful, where people are actually going to be able to contribute, and, uh, and we try to open all those doors the whole time. Absolutely. So, you know, just to conclude, and we have about 10 minutes so we can throw it open for questions. At the end of the day, uh, reason marketing, the reason uh, advocacy and awareness is so important is because you're building awareness, you're building a community around a very important piece of technology or code. And without that, it's, it's like uh, a tree falling in the forest. You, you just don't hear it if there's no one there. And so it's important to get the word out. And you're building a community around the technology. You're building a community of developers, users, collaborators, alliances around the community, uh, around the technology, rather. And uh, don't let the project fizzle. You know, make sure that you have enough marketing, enough structure and thought process behind your technology um, before it goes out. So I, just with that in mind, I, I just wanted to acknowledge uh, some of the contributions we got to this, uh, this story. Uh, we found a lot of these uh, fantastic graffiti pictures <laughs> that I talked about. <laughs> graffiti, huh? We found it online, and uh, there's, there's a fellow who goes around the world taking pictures of Linux graffiti. <laughs> so so that's where we found it. And then uh, Tracy and I, when we uh, presented at Barcelona, Spain, at the ELC, we also went around Barcelona and took pictures of uh, graffiti that we found. Um, and that's part of the culture of Barcelona. Um, they, they actually let people come in and put graffiti on shop windows. And uh, it We only had to walk out. Exactly. <laughs> And uh, there are a number of open source uh, sites that you can see from corporations. Qualcomm has a very good site. Intel has a very good site. So you'll get a sense of how uh, companies are messaging. If you are a new company to open source and you want to see how others are doing it, and if you want to see how a project is doing it, certainly check out uh, yoctaproject.org. Um, I think they're doing a, a really fantastic job of uh, marketing. We have two sets of t-shirts there. You're more than welcome to partake of those t-shirts. Um, but wanted to also throw it open for questions in case you guys had any questions. <coughs>